Hey guys, it's Dan at Snyder Performance Engineering. Today, we're going to do an overview of our new disaster prevention kit. The big thing with the disaster prevention kits, we've had customers over the years who will call us and ask what we recommend. Um, as far as brands, as far as kits, do, do we sell them? Um, we never really did prior to this. There was a few reasons, I'll touch on that really quick. Um, a couple of the main reasons why we didn't is we felt that they had some shortcomings. They weren't kind of doing the whole task, so to speak. Um, our kit is taking a, a, a step further than what everyone else has. Um, while still kind of pulling off the same task in the long run with a few extra things. The 6.7 Power Stroke has the CP4 pump from 11 to current. So it's, it, it's basically the pump you get. You don't have CP3s or anything like, like the other uh, competitors on the market as far as Duramax and the Cummins. Um, there's some problems with this pump that, you know, people say that they're susceptible to pretty much any kind of debris water is going to destroy it they are more susceptible than the cp3s are um, that's a pretty common knowledge type thing on the market today the main reason why is it's a very tight tolerance pump and they operate above 26,000 psi um, the cp3s usually stayed around 26 27,000 psi when these pumps will go all the way up to almost 31,000 even in a stock application so that being said, that added pressure makes them more susceptible. It just makes it an inherently more susceptible pump to issues. Um, so what I want to kind of go over with is how this pump functions. Um, it's, I mean, all pumps kind of function the same, but we kind of want to go over with how it works and how the disaster prevention kit is supposed to actually help the pump. So. You have your fuel, which is going to come in from your lift pump down on the frame rail. It's going to basically come in where this in arrow is. And what happens is, is it fills up the crankcase first. After it fills up the crankcase of the pump, which also is lubricating the shaft and the plungers and everything inside there, there's a little hole right here that goes down to the crankcase. And what happens is after it fills up the crankcase, that hole there is, a, is basically filled up with fuel and it runs up to your M-prop or your volume control valve. And whenever this regulates that fuel flow that's going into it, it'll open up and allow it to go up to these pump heads. It drops down and then hooks. It's kind of hard to see, but down in there, there's a little hole that's basically drilled up to these pump heads. That's, that's your feed hole. So what happens is with these pumps, whenever they have issues, the crankcase will go out on them. When the crankcase goes out, it can be from water, debris, whatever. There's, ba there's basically bearing material, there's chrome on some of the parts to help you know, make it slicker, to help with lubrication. All that stuff starts peeling off and crushing around in there. And the first thing it does is it comes up out of the crankcase and goes to this valve. When that valve opens up, there's a tiny screen on it to help get rid of some of the debris, but it usually passes right through. It's only, it's like a couple micron screens, very, very large screen. And after it goes through that screen, this thing opens up, puts it right up to the pump head. Once it gets in the pump head, it starts scoring the plunger and eventually can make it out to the injectors. So, the whole idea behind the disaster prevention kit is to eliminate the feed to the pump heads from the crankcase. So you don't want to be getting all the crap and debris if this pump starts going bad and pushed out to your injectors. If it's pushed out to the injectors, you wipe out the injectors as well. So essentially the disaster prevention kit is helping you save the fuel injectors. So even if the pump goes bad, you're not wiping out the whole fuel system. And in theory, this works pretty well. And this is basically how every disaster prevention kit works, is it's feeding this valve, rather than from the crankcase, you have fuel coming in, and it lifts this valve up, 
and it feeds the valve from filtered fuel. So the fuel that's entering your volume control valve is filtered then and not coming from the crankcase. So in, in that theory, you're not gonna have the debris from the crankcase, anything else that would be floating around in the pump is not gonna be able to get out to the pump heads. Um, so the theory of the disaster prevention kit from a basic standpoint works pretty well, it, it, it does. It's, and that's basically every kit on the market is. But there's a lot of shortcomings with, that, with these kits that are already out. A couple of the issues that, that we have with it um, from, a, from a business standpoint is we don't like to cut or modify the truck to install parts. So especially a part like this that's just supposed to make the truck more reliable. So we wanted to kind of take that out of the equation. The other kits on the market have you cut the feed line that actually feeds this pump. So there's a hard line that comes from your fuel filter that actually feeds the inlet of this pump. And every other kit on the market has you actually chopping that off and running a new line down um, to run to the block that they have that goes on the pump. So what we wanted to do was eliminate that. We don't want you to have to cut your truck up. We wanna make it to where it's a seamless installation. You're not cutting anything. You're not using compression fittings. You're not doing anything that doesn't seem factory, so to speak. So what we came up with was a different way to go about doing this where we're using a Y manifold. This is the factory line that used to run to the hard line that fed this pump. What we're doing is we're actually just popping this line off and we're created a, a manifold down here that is essentially taking the fuel and distributing it. And we're adding a whole new line to feed this M-prop valve or the volume control valve. And by doing that, we're allowing we're allowing the system to stay together as it is from the factory. We're just adding a line. And when we add that line, you obviously don't have to cut the hard line that fed the pump. So everything just stays on the way it's supposed to. So the original hard line gets fed from our factory style uh, formed quick connect hose. And then we're also tapping into that and running a new line down to feed this valve, all filtered fuel and now this valve is no longer getting fuel from the crankcase. And it's also not uh, having the customer cut the line to do so. The other thing we did too is in this manifold, we added an extra bung in the end of it so that you can actually, um, you can actually check fuel pressure. So you could, you, could run, uh, you could even run another line out of here to a dual fueler, or you could hook a fuel pressure gauge or sending unit up to the end of this little Y block that we have here. Um, the nice thing with that is in a factory system, there's really no good place to check fuel pressure. You have to run a bunch of adapters that aren't readily available. So that is a very simple thing. It's a quarter inch NPT plug, easily adaptable to pretty much any kind of gauge. Um, so that pretty much covers our, our basic disaster prevention kit, our, our base kit. Um, and it has a retention ring. So basically this, this ring bolts on here and that will hold the valve on. It's all O-ringed, it literally just slides on and you bolt it in place and it locks it on there. All right guys, now that we've gone over our basic kit, I want to kind of touch on what really sets the options and everything that we have for our kit, what really sets it apart from all the other disaster prevention kits. This is also something that we kind of want to touch on because it's something that it's something that isn't really thought about. Um, the base fuel pressure for the CP4 is actually regulated at this point of the, the fuel pump. Um, this is the actual return regulator in a CP4. Um, so whenever your lift pump's running on the truck, this is the return regulator. There's a little valve in here with a spring. The spring's not in there, but Essentially what happens is once the crankcase pressure gets so high in this pump, the spring compresses, this little piston moves up, and then the excess fuel comes out of the return side of the pump here and goes back to the tank. So what's not thought of 
on a lot of the disaster prevention kits and even under normal circumstances when you're working on these trucks, um, when a failure of this type happens where this pump goes out, one of the main things that happens is you also have debris coming out of the return side. That debris that's coming out of the return side is going through the metal hard line. It's also going through the fuel line, the fuel cooler, and going back to the fuel tank. So that's one thing that isn't even thought of on the factory level, unfortunately, because there there are dealerships that you know when they use a they use a uh, they call it a disaster kit, believe it or not. That whenever the fuel systems fail, they give you new injector lines, new injectors, a new fuel pump, fuel filters, and, and things of that nature. They don't give you a new fuel cooler. They don't give you new base fuel lines. They don't even tell you all the time, depending depending. Um, to clean the tank out. So that is the one thing that wasn't really thought of much on everything, everything kit wise on the market to, to now. So that was the one thing that we at SPE wanted to touch on was the return side. The return side is very overlooked. So whenever this return regulator is opening up, anything that's in this crankcase is directly feeding into that regulator. So when it opens, it's all coming back out it's going back to the tank, it's going through the fuel cooler, it's going into the tank. You know, it, it's, it's, it, it creates a mess in that area as well, not just on the high pressure side out to the injectors, but also the rest of the fuel system. So what we ended up doing is we went to the drawing board and thought about, you know, okay, we can cover the, the basis of getting the, getting the pump to a point where the the high pressure side isn't going to have debris going out to the injectors. So we basically take care of that with this kit. And then what we're also doing is we're looking at the return side now, knowing that we want to take care of that issue. So we came out with a return fuel filter. It's a very simple fuel filter. Once again, it's something that you don't have to cut for. You don't have to, you don't have to modify the truck to put it on. So, what happens is whenever all this return fuel comes out, there's a return line that also comes out of the rail, the driver's side high pressure fuel rail where the regulator's at. There's a regulator there and there's return fuel pressure that comes out of there as well. So when this return fuel comes out, you have return fuel coming out of that rail, they tee together and then this goes on right there. So literally you have a section, maybe uh, I'd say maybe 18 to 20 inches of fuel line that the debris will go through on the return side and then it will hit this filter before it can go back to the tank. Inside this filter, it's all O-ringed. It's a quick disconnect style installation. So this will slide on, this will go right down on where the factory fuel line quick disconnect is. This will slide right down on there at O-rings, locks in, tighten it down with a bolt. And then this is your fuel filter screen. It's a 20 micron, uh, very high efficiency stainless screen. It's washable, reusable. Um, we will also carry them if you want to replace it. And it essentially drops down in a recessed little hole there to lock it in. And then it has a lid that will bolt on top of that. And then there's a quick disconnect fitting that the return line will snap on. And this allows it to reconnect. You literally take the line off of the truck, put the fuel filter assembly on and reconnect it. Very simple, there's no cutting involved. It's honestly, even for someone that doesn't work on vehicles, it's max 10 minute installation. Um, but what this does, just to recap, is this is gonna stop all of the nasty debris that this pump can put out from going back to your tank. So it keeps you from having to replace the fuel cooler it keeps, you to have, it keeps you from having to replace 20 foot of fuel, or fuel line or clean it. And it also keeps you from having to drop the tank and clean it. Which if there's any, you know, anybody that has done that knows that it's not fun. It's, you got a little hole in the top of the tank and you're trying to get all that little metal shavings and stuff out, it's terrible. So this is basically gonna take care of that and it's gonna do it without having to modify the truck. 
So we're going to sell this by itself. So you'll be able to buy the return fuel filter as an add-on. So if you want to put it on an existing disaster prevention kit setup, or you just want to put this on only, you can actually do that. You'll, this will sell by itself. We're also going to sell this base kit with the return filter and without the return filter. So that gives you many options on you know, how you would want to set the system up. I mean, I would go this route. It's going to take care of basically everything as far as when the pump goes bad, it's going to take care of keeping it keeping the debris from going to the injectors, it's gonna take care of keeping the debris from going back to the tank of the truck. Um, and even though you, on the return side, you have a little, you know, 20 inches of line, you can easily just pop the fittings off that, spray it out, it comes, it, it'll, that will clean very easily. So, but that's, that's it, that's, that's what we have. Uh, yeah, that's what we have. <laughs> That's what we have. <laughs> That's what we got. <laughs> All right, guys, now that we've kind of gone over the, both options and what we have going on here as far as the kit goes, um, I also wanted to touch on <clears throat> your ability from a customer standpoint to put the truck back to stock. So now that you're not cutting any lines or doing anything like that, you literally save the factory fuel line. You can disconnect all this take all this off of the truck, you put your factory fuel line back on the hard line, you remove your valve from where it was stacked on the pump here, you take that out, put your valve back in, and you're ready to go. So there's, you know, being that there was no cutting or anything like that, you just literally save your old parts and you can put the truck 100% back to stock. Or you can put it back to stock and take this and put it on another truck, whatever, you know, whatever you need to do. So now that we've kind of gone over our kit, this is a 6.7 Power Stroke uh, disaster prevention kit. This particular one that I just showed you here is for 11 to 19. Um, we will be coming out with a version for the 2020 and up trucks. Um, it will be slightly different and it is on the way. And we will also be doing an install video on this kit shortly. Um, so. Stay in tune and watch, watch for more videos. We plan on covering more products as time goes on. Thanks. Nailed it. You gotta get that in there at the end. Uh, Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs>